Hi, I am Miss Judith, uh, Judith Cosgray at the Baltimore Branch Library, and today I'm going to read a story to you about unicorns. I've always loved unicorns my entire life, and when we did Tales and Tales, I immediately thought of the beautiful colored tales on the unicorns in the stories. So I found this really cool story called Brian, um, Margaret's Unicorn by Bryony Mae Smith, and we'll get started. I love the landscapes in this uh, book. They're so gorgeous with the cottages and everything. My whole world changed when we moved to a faraway place, to a cottage in the mountains to be near grandma. Everything smelled different and strange and the house was full of empty spaces. That first afternoon, dad said, Margaret, why don't you go exploring? By the time you come back, your new room will look just like your old room, I promise. Mom put hot chocolate in the thermos. Be careful not to go farther than the big stone, she said, and she gave me a kiss. When I reached the big stone at the end of our garden, I saw the sea spread out before me. A heavy fog was traveling through the sky and soon the water was covered in mist. No, that wasn't mist, it was clouds. No, they weren't clouds, they were white horses. Not horses, unicorns. They were leaping into the air, swept up by the wind, and then in a blink, they were gone. I started to run back to tell mom and dad when I heard a snuffling noise. I tiptoed closer and closer, down a little dip, where something silvery lay tangled in the weeds. <gasps> a baby! Carefully, I freed him, then wrapped him in my coat. When I got home, Grandma was at the door. She'd come by to help unpack. I didn't think there were any left, she said. I told her all about the herd that had flown past me. When I was a girl, she said, smiling, we would watch the unicorns fly off to Unicorn Island on the last summer wind. Grandma told me everything she knew about unicorns. They only eat flowers, but there aren't enough here to feed them all year round. Every spring, I would wait for them to come back to eat the young heather and the thistles that grow across the mountains. I looked at our cottage window and there were hardly any flowers to be seen. What will we feed him, I asked. Grandma thought for a moment, let's go, she said, and we jumped into the car and headed to town. At a small shop, we bought bunches of flowers for my little unicorn. When we got home, we fed him. What do unicorns drink? I asked Grandma. Water that has been touched by the moonlight, she said. It's what makes their horns glow in the dark. I was, uh, it's what I give them for their magic. I stroked you know, my unicorn's mane and Grandma, and I finished pillows out of moving boxes to make him a cozy nest near my bed. After mom and dad had finished unloading the boxes, they came in to find us with my little unicorn. Mom knelt beside him and he nuzzled her hand. That night, dad and I pulled on our boots and headed out to the hills. As soon as the moon touched the stream, we filled buckets with water and carried them home. The water glowed in our dark garage. My unicorn drank as we watched him, amazed. When I went to sleep, I let the little unicorn climb into bed with me and I stroked his speckled coat. My unicorn whimpered. I was so excited to have found him. I'd forgotten how scared he must be. It's okay, I whispered. Spring will be back in no time. The next day, my unicorn and I went for a walk. We crunched through the leaves and caught them as they floated down from the trees. I picked up a horse chestnut, opened it carefully, and touched its soft inside, which felt like a little fairy fur coat. That evening, we watched the stars come out before heading to bed. They seem to be much brighter than they were in our old town.
By the time all the trees were bare, my little unicorn had grown comfortable in our cottage. One of our favorite things to do was go to the beach and chase the waves. White foam looked like unicorns rolling and disappearing out into the sandy shore. Then we'd race home with color, cold fingers and toes and hooves. A fire, I tell my unicorn. It's the best thing to cozy up to. We curl up together and listen to the rain tap, tap, tap on the window. Isn't that the loveliest sound, I'd say? At Christmas, we decorated the tree and the house was filled with smells of our old home. When it snowed for the first time, my unicorn was dazzled by it and by how quiet everything became. We walked down the road and stopped in the frozen puddles. Together, we made a snow unicorn. Dad broke off an icicle hanging from our roof, and we gave it to the crystal unicorn. I was missing our old home less and less. Weather grew warmer, and I saw buds appear on the trees, and green shoots start to put us up through the ground. Yellow gorse and dandelion flowers started to bloom in the hills. Soon, I knew my unicorn's family would come back, and he would leave. When a unicorn is your friend, you wish spring would stay far away. On the first day of spring, as we sat in the hills, the unicorns floated down from the sky like snowflakes. Slowly, one of them with chocolate brown eyes and a soft pink nose drew close. My unicorn skipped toward her and leaned against her white coat. He nuzzled her cheek. I knew this must be his mother. It was time to say goodbye to my unicorn. Please don't forget me, I whispered to his silky ear and hugged him tightly. Now spring has come and gone and the days have grown longer. I've made some new friends, but I still miss my unicorn. One day when we went walking over the hills, mom, dad, and grandma, and friend Abby and me, as Abby and I were searching for bugs in the tall grass, something nudged my arm and I turned in surprise. My unicorn had grown so much already and lost his baby coat. When he raised his head, he was taller than me, wild and beautiful. I plucked a sprig of heather from the stem and held out my palm. Cautiously, my unicorn ate from my hand and watched me with his dark eyes. His ears flicked back and forth, listening to all around him. I wanted to reach out and touch him. He took one more flower and then he must have heard something or maybe I moved too quickly because he turned and galloped away in an instant. I scrambled a few paces after him and watched him disappear into the mountains. He was gone. I turned to Abby who looked on in amazement. That was an old friend, I said. Mom called, it was time to head home through the heather and the thistles to our cottage in the mountains. The end. So I have a little unicorn craft that you can do um, just to remind you of the beauty of the unicorns. Now you have your head here and you will glue your unicorn horn on there. You can decorate it any way you like with um, glitter or your crayons or coloring pencils that you have. Now you're going to need to put holes around here to put the main in. If you don't have a hole punch, there's a really easy way to do it. You just kind of fold it down a little bit around the edge so you've got this corner. And then you take your scissors and you just do a little notch. Little notches. And that'll make a little hole, just enough to post, put your, um, your uh, yarn through. And you do that on both sides in the same spots. And then you will put your yarn through and you will 
lace all your yarn through and tie it. And then that'll make your unicorn mane. And you can braid it or do whatever you like with it. You can brush it out and it'll look like a big flowing mane. Um, that's the beautiful thing about yarn. You can make it look like anything. So thank you for joining us today for our um, unicorn tales and tales. And we will see you next time. Bye.